So to kick it off, um, if each candidate starting with Shafak could say their name, their party, um, their kind of relationship to housing, so whether they're a renter, whether they're a homeowner, whether they're a landlord, and then we'll get into the more about why housing is important. Do you want to start? Shall I stand up? Uh, you can, yeah, well, I think yeah, more comfortable for you. Right, good evening, my name is Shafak Mohammed. I'm the Liberal Democrat candidate for Sheffield Central. Uh, so what's my relationship with housing? Well, like many other people, you all need to have a house to live under and to look after your family. So I'm being fortunate in the sense that my father, he owned a house. Uh, when I got married, I got cajoled into getting a mortgage at a very young age. Uh, I didn't think it was the thing to do at that time in the early 20s, but actually looking back at it, I think my father and my uncle sent me on a good track. So I actually own my own house. Um, I've got a young family, I've got a 22 year old that wants to buy a house. Uh, we've been looking for a house, we've seen many houses that he likes. Uh, we then went to the mortgage providers, and at that point, despite him being on, I would say, quite a decent salary of £16,000 for somebody in the early 20s, absolutely no chance of getting a mortgage. Uh, so at the age of 44, I've now re entered the mortgage market again to actually get a house or at least get a mortgage offer uh, jointly with him. So uh, on paper, I'm supposedly going to be working till I'm 70 years old. Uh, so they're the difficulties. I mean, just between friends, I don't intend to pay that mortgage. My son will pay that mortgage. But they're the difficulties that he's facing. Clearly, there are many other friends I have that are having difficulty raising mortgages uh, of 20% or more in terms of deposits. Uh, and clearly the shortage of housing has been a chronic issue for the last two decades, if not more, and more needs to be done, for both in increasing the supply of housing per se, for those who want to buy, but then, you know, for those that are renting, also the conditions of some of the properties are dire, and what we've seen in this city of ours is that social housing has decreased, and private renters have got higher and higher, and with that, the regulation hasn't followed, so we see many examples of where houses are suffering from damp, overcrowding. We've seen issues in Page Hall where we've ended up the City Council, which I'm a member of but don't, not part of the administration, have had to introduce selective licensing to deal with some of the issues that have emerged in Page Hall, etc. So I'll be interested to hear you know, your questions and see what answers I can give from a Lib Dem point of view. And once again, thank you guys for organising tonight. Thanks for coming. Paul? Okay, well, thanks very much. I'm Paul Blomfield. I been the Labour MP for the last seven years, having lived and worked in Sheffield most of my life, um, having both rented and owned, and currently of a kind of fortunate generation of uh, just paid off my mortgage. Um, and uh, unlike Shafak, I'm helping my son at the moment buy in London, um, which is a formidable uh, uh, thing to do. Um, I think it's really important that you've, own, you've organised this uh, event. I've been involved in hustings in 2010, 2015 when I started, and we've never had one on housing before. That does reflect the crisis, but I have to say my mailbag as, a, as an MP didn't reflect that. Um, I get about 300 emails a day on a whole bunch of stuff. Sometimes there are issues in relation to housing repairs and social housing, but in general, some of the issues we'll be talking about today don't, aren't given sufficient voice. So I think it's really brilliant um, that uh, Renters Rising has taken this initiative to try to organise um, those who are in the private rented sector across Sheffield. I understand you've got about 400 people signed up mm. um, so far. That's a tip of a very big iceberg. But it's so important that um, people give voice to the sector. Um, I mean, historically, private renting was the norm in Britain. Uh, and people lived in appalling conditions. That began to change. Um, in Sheffield, it began to change when the first Labour Council was elected in 1926, and one of its top priorities was tearing down, down slum housing and building uh, council housing. It transformed the city. We were ahead of most cities, uh, which is why we haven't got some of the back-to-backs that still exist um, in one form or another in Leeds and Manchester, some of our smaller towns in West Yorkshire, because... We had the political will to do that. Later on in the last century, we obviously saw the huge growth of owner occupation. And then we were left with a private rented sector, which lots of us were part of. You know, I, was, I, I rented as a student, and then other people, you know, people rented short term. 
but it was always seen as transient. You know, this was never where you were going to end up. And so we, we rented, we were treated badly, it was rubbish. You kind of live with it because it was, it, it, was it was a step along the way. Now that's clearly not the case. I mean, we know that the number of people in private rented accommodation has doubled um, over the last decade, now talking about 11 million people. Shockingly, 40% of families with children are now in the private rented sector. So the, the housing landscape has been transformed uh, and we've got to develop uh, policies which we'll be talking about tonight. And so now, now's not the moment to kind of be outlining every single policy uh, in our manifesto because I'm sure you're going to be throwing lots of questions at us and I don't want to monopolise too much time. But we've got to have policies which deal with the housing crisis, not simply the immediate problems that you face as private renters, but actually transforming the landscape so that we are building more homes, affordable homes, for people to own and to rent, uh, and by turning the market upside down, so it's no longer a landlord's market, so, long, so it's no longer a seller's market, then we begin to create opportunities for people, and we'll talk tonight about how you do that. Okay. Uh. Hi, I'm Natalie Bennett, the Green Party candidate for Sheffield Central. Um, since I've opened my mouth, you'll know that I come from some way south of here, quite a long way south of here, Australia. And the Australian housing market has a lot of similarities to the British housing market. And because of that, I bought a house when I was in Australia, and when I left Australia and moved to Britain, I sold it. So when I settled in London in 1999, as a private renter, I spent six months in private accommodation. The ceiling only fell in once. Uh, due to a leak from the upstairs flat uh, and I had some issues with the landlord and so I bought. And so now here in Sheffield, having sold that house in London, I'm lucky enough to own my own place just up the hill in Norfolk Park above the steel steps and I'm very proud of the robins in my garden. And I think everybody should be able to feel like they can settle down and have a place to live, whether they're able to buy or whether they're renting. So I think the basic philosophical point we need to think about here is how do we regard houses? And I start off with houses because at the moment we're mostly treating houses as financial assets. That's the way they're being looked at. That's the way they're being considered. And then it's a question of what do you do with that financial asset? And that is entirely the wrong approach. What we need to do is say these are homes that should be secure, affordable places for people to live. Now, what we've seen is a huge privatisation of many parts of British life. We've seen privatisation of the NHS. We've seen privatisation of lots of council services, and the name Amy comes to mind. We've seen privatisation, horrifically, of prisons and probation services. And... What we've seen, although it isn't often considered in the same way, is a massive privatisation of council and now increasingly social housing. We've lost 1.9 million homes under right to buy. And the other privatisation we've seen is the privatisation of house building. Up until about the mid-70s, there was lots of council homes being built and Britain's long-term housing crisis was just about solved. And then we started to rely on the market to supply homes. And the crisis has been getting worse ever since.